All right, so welcome to the uh, session for Ripon College. This session, we're gonna focus on student activities and intramurals. And I am Jill Cardinal, I'm the uh, admission event campus coordinator. And I'm joined today by Sarah and Maddie from campus. I'll have them introduce themselves in a sec. This is gonna just be very informal. You can ask questions. You can have your video on if you choose. Unmute yourself if you choose. We're just really here to kind of share some information about campus and get you acquainted and answer questions. So with that, um, Sarah, do you wanna give us a little intro of yourself? Sure, so I'm Sarah Van Steenbergen. I am a Ripon alum class of 2012 and I am the director of student activities and orientation at the college. So uh, under that umbrella, I uh, advise all of the student organizations. I advise our Greek community. Um, I plan orientation and welcome week programming. I facilitate break transportation, community service, leadership development, some student government stuff, all, all sorts of fun stuff lives under my umbrella. Perfect, and Maddie? Um, I'm Maddie Hester. I am a Ripon College alum as well, class of 2017. Um, I am the Wilmore Center building manager and the coordinator for campus recreation. So we'll, I'll dive more into what we actually do in those two things. So. Perfect. And like Jill said, we are gonna keep this pretty informal. We have a PowerPoint and I'm gonna share my screen. It's really just to make sure me and Maddie are covering our bases and, and getting you all of the information that we have for you. So at any point, we can unshare the screen if questions emerge and we want to have some some discussion in this little space here. Um, but I am going to share my screen now and we're going to get going here. Perfect. Uh, so we're, again, Maddie Coster and Sarah Van Steenbergen. We're going to be joined in a little bit by two upperclassmen students who are deeply involved in a couple of different areas of our work. Um, and they can provide some on the ground student in, input into some of this stuff, but we're gonna talk about different ways to get involved on campus. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so like I said, we cover a lot of different areas of, of involvement opportunities for the college and we're gonna try and talk through a few of them in some depth here, uh, starting with student organizations. Uh, so. On campus right now, we have more than 40 student organizations uh, with really a huge range of focuses. So we have clubs representing, you can just see here, our radio station, WRPN. We have a, a club dance team. Uh, we've got groups that represent different cultural uh, affiliations and, and passions. So Amnesty International is the bottom left there, all the way over to our investment club and everything in between, right? We've got political organizations, we've got we're really passionate about this one singular thing, organizations, and any organization we don't have, it's super easy to start your own. So if there's something that you are excited about in your life now, and you wanna continue being excited about it and build a community around it at Ripon, the process of creating a student organization and getting access to all of the resources that student orgs take advantage of is delightfully simple. Um, and obviously you're gonna, you're gonna provide programming to a, a, the campus community when you're part of a student org. You're gonna have your own leadership development opportunities and make connections with people who care about the things that you care about, which is really the, the coolest part of getting involved in any of the, the, the capacities that we're gonna talk about today. <clears throat> Moving on, we have uh, a couple of different branches of our student run government. So we have a student senate uh, and a student judicial board the Student Senate is sort of the governing body of all things student organizations, whereas the Judicial Board is sort of the student voice in addressing problems on campus. Uh, there are a lot of situations where if there's an issue going on, for example, there was some vandalism a couple of years ago, and that case was brought to J Board so that students were holding each other accountable for the, the, the community issue, which is really, really cool opportunity. From a student senate standpoint, again, they're, they're the governing body of all things student organizations. They're built of representatives of each grade or class at Ripon. So right away in August, first years will have the opportunity to elect a student senator to represent all first years in that space. And then uh, several student organizations and Greek organizations have their own 
uh, representatives. So that's sort of the makeup of the Student Senate. And the Student Senate's primary charge is to manage the student activities fee. Every Ripon College student pays $300 a year, and that's your student activities fee. Uh, the vast majority of that money ends up going into a big old pot. Um, and that pot is accessible for student organizations to request to do really cool things. Um, right now that pot is upwards of $150,000 uh, and it, we're anticipating seeing it grow into next year. So that's a really cool opportunity to have some very direct say over how money that you pay to the college gets spent. Um, and, and it's entirely student driven. I don't get to dictate how Senate money is spent. I don't even get to request that it gets spent on my stuff, right? Like it's entirely about what students wanna see happen with that money um, and how they can support the student organization community. And then by extension, the campus community through those funds. So getting involved in student government is a really great opportunity to have some direct control over the campus environment. Next, I'm gonna transition to giving you a brief summary of our Greek community. So we are gonna have seven Greek chapters at Ripon next fall. Uh, and we've got three national sororities. So these are chapters of national organizations and like our Kappa Deltas are connected to the Kappa Deltas at every other college campus with a Kappa Delta chapter. Same thing with our Alpha Chi Omega and Alpha Delta Pi sororities. We have three national fraternities. So same thing, just all male organizations instead of all women organizations. Uh, and our national fraternities are Phi Delta Theta, Sigma Chi and Theta Chi. And then finally, we have a local all male fraternity. Um, so they don't have a national organization. They're just affiliated with Ripon. So all of their alums are from Ripon College, which is cool. And that is Phi Kappa Pi or the Merriman chapter. Um, all of these provide really excellent opportunities to uh, get connected to people on campus as well as their huge alumni networks and form really good bonds. Also, all fraternities and sororities are philanthropically focused. Philanthropically focused means they, they do community service, right? They, their, their mission as an organization is to make the world a better place um, in addition to building their bonds of sisterhood or brotherhood. Uh, and so there's just a lot of really excellent benefits of being involved in a fraternity or sorority. You're not gonna get the opportunity to join a fraternity or sorority until your spring semester. We want you to have a Ripon College GPA before you take on the responsibility of joining the Greek community. Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen. It's gonna happen right away at the start of spring semester. We wanna give you that time to transition into being a Ripon College student before you're affiliated with a specific chapter. Uh, and it gives you a whole semester to get to know the entire community and really figure out where you think your place is within the Greek community. So there's a lot of good benefits to waiting until spring to join that, that um, part of campus. And I can absolutely answer any questions you have about what joining a Greek chapter would, would look like. But first, I'm going to turn it over to Maddie to talk about campus recreation. Hello. Okay, so campus recreation, formerly known as intramural sports, same thing, different name because we're not just heavily focused on the athletic portion of it. So campus rec has four seasons. So the first season is between September and October, usually falls with our fall break, but also it's just mid-semester. Um, after mid-semester and then into the winter semester. And then those typically, right, like fall usually is anything that we can do outdoors. It usually is sand volleyball, it's flag football, it can be um, kickball uh, is another thing that we do. We always tend to do a couple of athletic things that are related, but then also things that for people who don't want to participate in athletics, we can do that as well. Ping pong, billiards, Super Smash Bros, Mario Kart, that type of stuff. Um, we pick up uh, season three right after about two weeks after we get back from break from winter break. And then that will include basketball, soccer, badminton. And then then our spring break, our spring season will be usually volleyball, bags, any sort of long games, things that we can do outside. Um, so those are our league events, uh, but we also have something called day events. 
So if we wanted to host, say, a Super Smash Bro tournament, we would do that just, say, on a Saturday or even a Wednesday evening, just depending on when enrollment will be up. Uh, when students don't have a lot of classes or a lot of coursework, that's when we try to that's when we try to have these activities so that you guys can participate. Um, always looking for new ideas. So we're actually very heavily on the Instagram right now. So if you guys want to go drop a like and a follow, that would be great. RC Campus Recreation, I did not put it in there, but we do have a heavy following right now. So please, <laughs> um, but that also like on that page, we do also request like, hey, have any ideas for anything that you want to do submitted to us and we'll put it into consideration. Our intramural sign up, so it's Campus Rec, but we go through a third party who is called I Am Leagues. That's how you sign up for anything. So you'll get an email from me at first semester saying, hey, join imleagues.com, create a team and get signed up. Only had to sign up one time, doesn't cost you anything. Um, it's part of the fees and dues that Sarah talked about earlier. Oh my goodness, look at all of these happy intramurals. I would also like to point out that staff and faculty can play in Campus Rec and in that basketball photo right there with those winning t-shirt is, yep, that one right there, that's my team. So <laughs> watch out on the basketball court, don't mess around. <laughs> Uh, I just want to hop in and say the, the day trips piece is one of the coolest parts of Campus Rec. Every welcome week, we try and do a Campus Rec day trip. This photo right here is actually of uh, a student who went to Devil's Lake, which is a beautiful, beautiful outdoor area uh, and state park. National Park? Yep, State Park. State Park, great. Uh, <laughs> it's about an hour and a half, two hours away from here. And we just Hopped on a bus, anybody who wanted to go, you, once you got there, it was sort of your your time to explore and, and be outside. We paid, and go, we paid and, for the campus rec, paid for the lunches. You yeah. just brought your own water, could fill up there for refills. And then also like campus rec is looking to do something in the winter. Like we just bought a bunch of snowshoes. So hopefully going snowshoeing in the prairie during doing a trip that way during the winter as well. So trying to do at least one day event right per season that we talked about those leagues that we talked about earlier. Thanks for that reminder, Sarah. Always. I was Maddie's gonna, gonna talk a little bit more about the Wilmore oh. Center when we're done, but I'm gonna hop back in and do a couple more areas of student activities and orientation or SAO. SAO is how we refer to sort of everything within my office. Um, so part of that is our, our community service output. Service and giving back to the community is a big part of what Ribbon College is, is about and what we stand for. Uh, and so my office does uh, much like with Campus Rec, trying to uh, approach different levels of involvement and interest, we do different levels of involvement with community service. Um, there will be service trips, and, and you know we've done things from head to Horicon Marsh to clean up and, and remulch a path, which is this first picture here, all the way up to getting partnered with a Habitat for Humanity and doing an alternative spring break. Obviously, we're not doing that right now because thanks COVID, but all of those options are particularly available for us to, to explore if there's interest. Um, we coordinate blood drives through both Community Blood Center and the American Red Cross. So we'll have a blood drive on campus about every 72 days because that's about how frequently you are, you know, biologically allowed to donate blood. Um, we also, this top photo here represents uh, something that's called Rally's Closet. We have a rather large room of donated professional clothing items that students have free access to. Um, and you don't have to bring it back. If you, if you need a, a new shirt for a job interview or an internship interview, and you don't have time or ability to get to the store to go shop, you can come to Rally's Closet and get some fresh clothes to feel good and, and strong and powerful going into that interview, which is really great. Uh, we also have facilitated some really wildly successful collections. This bottom corner picture here, uh, all of those are plastic bags to be donated to uh, a recycling center that reutilizes them and, and puts, some, puts good quality ones back into the hands of communities that need them like Goodwill and, and other, other thrift uh, type establishments. Um, and everybody's got a bag of bags hanging around in their house and you certainly will collect one in, in your room in your residence hall too. And then quick stop and serve type projects, right? We can make dog toys out of old t-shirts 
to give to the Green Lake County Animal Shelter, right? Things like that, where it's a quick five minutes of your time, but you've given back to your community and we handle the back end logistics of getting those donations to where they need to be. Um, so there's lots of different ways that folks can get involved in community service. While we're here, we also have um, community service hours tracking systems in my office. So if you need to collect service hours, maybe for a scholarship application, we can track that for you and then generate an official statement of declaring how, how many hours you have collected through our system. So all of that is stuff that SAO can be helpful with. We also provide um, some break transportation assistance. Uh, Ripon, Wisconsin is a lovely, lovely place, but it is not immediately accessible to some conveniences like airports. So if you're coming to Ripon from far away, uh, we can help you get there and back if you're traveling near an airport. So we provide uh, shuttle services to and from the Milwaukee and Chicago O'Hare airports. Uh, typically we'll do those around fall, winter, and spring breaks as well as start of year and end of year. The break schedule is obviously in flux, but we'll help whenever the college is sort of taking a pause for whatever amount of time, right? Uh, I'm about to send out the shuttle email for any students who are going home for the summer. They'll sign up for a shuttle either to Milwaukee or Chicago. They'll let me know which of the days I'm offering shuttles they want to leave. Uh, right now in COVID times, it's an incredibly safe process. We actually just rent out a whole school bus, even if it's two people riding it, so that there can be distancing, folks are wearing masks, and we're helping facilitate safe travel home, um, which we know is a priority for a lot of folks. And it's a pretty low cost. Uh, we don't get service from Uber or, or anything like that. And so if you were going to solicit an Uber to come and get you from Oshkosh or Fond du Lac, it would probably cost as much just for the Uber to come and pick you up as, as this would to get you all the way to Chicago. Um, and so we're, we're trying to make it accessible to students to get home when, when it's time to go home. Uh, and outside of COVID precaution time, we would also offer, let's say you needed to get to an airport for a family thing, not in line with a college break, for, for an additional fee, we can help potentially coordinate some of those things as well. So we're trying to be as helpful to students as we can be. And speaking of that, one of the biggest ways we do that is through your orientation and welcome week experience. So this year, because of COVID, orientation is going to be a virtual experience. Uh, between June 7th and 18th, you'll have access to a virtual orientation platform that basically walks you through all of the different resources and offices that the college has in place to help you be successful once your students here. You'll complete that. And as soon as you complete that, you'll get a link to sign up for a time to meet with your assigned academic advisor. Those appointments will be held between June 21st and June 23rd. You'll get to pick which time works best for you based on when your faculty advisor is available in, that, in those windows. Uh, and that's the appointment where you will discuss what you want to do while you're here, discuss any goals of what you want to accomplish, uh, and then get you registered for fall semester classes. So you need to complete that virtual orientation platform to get the advising appointment. And if you don't complete the platform, you're going to be registering for classes later in the summer. So obviously, completing that earlier is going to be advantageous to you just because you're going to knock, knock out some, some tasks and get registered for classes in the first batch of first years who are eligible. Then over the course of the later summer, our team of uh, orientation counselors that we call the orientation committee or OCs, our OCs are going to have assigned lists of uh, new students. So like the five of you who are on the call right now would all be on OC Sarah's team. And OC Sarah's team is going to connect via Zoom a couple of times over the course of July and early August just to start building some of that social connection that we would normally build during an in-person summer orientation program. That's also gonna give you the opportunity to already know some folks when you hit the ground in real time during move-in weekend. Uh, and then those same groups would continue meeting during welcome week, just to ensure that you don't have any questions. If you do have questions and you don't know where they go, you've got somebody who is like your person that you can go and contact. And you're, 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 
you're building those social connections again. And, and that eases the transition into college. So what we're obviously still uh, formulating details about what move-in weekend and welcome week are gonna look like. And we will absolutely be getting information about that out to you as soon as we can. But that's sort of what you can anticipate uh, from a move-in orientation welcome week standpoint. And Sarah, this poster is just, or rather this picture is just uh, an array of posters of the different types of events that we typically host during welcome week. So this one's from two years ago. We've got our annual community potluck where uh, the churches in the area <laughs> shoulder tap their, their members to cook lots and lots of delicious food for you all. Uh, and then they just bring it to campus and you can eat it for free. It's great. We do trivia. We have a bonfire pit on campus that's really well utilized among our student groups. So we'll do, we'll do a bonfire situation. Uh, we'll do resource tours. We take a trip to Green Lake. We have, you know, dance party. This, this uh, welcome week was caveman themed. So that's why it says dancing with dinos. Um, we do some uh, programming with local community businesses to sort of show you what Rippin has to offer. That's the Taste of Rippin one down in the bottom corner. And then there's also a, a, one of the most popular events of the whole year on campus is our student activities fair. All of our student organizations table in one big moment, dinners held outside. It's just this really great community moment where you can go and get signed up for student activities right there uh, in the first week of classes. And then they'll add you to their email list and get you connected to what the group is doing. So. A lot of fun to be had during Welcome Week and more to come on that topic. We have, while we've been talking, been joined by uh, two phenomenal upperclassmen students, Ryan Schmidt and Alicia Harvitt. Uh, both of them are deeply connected to all of the areas that Maddie and I just wrapped up talking about. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a little bit and let Ryan and Alicia introduce themselves. Ryan, you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. I didn't know who was in the book first, but yeah. So yeah, I'm Ryan. I'm a junior. Uh, I'm a sports management communication major, and I work in the campus recreation department for Maddie. Yeah. He's my lifesaver. I would just like to put that out there. It, he is the campus rec face of everything. That's He pretty much is campus rec. Okay, that's all. Yeah. Thanks, Maddie. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, and then my name is Alicia Harvett. Um, I am the student manager over at SAO. So I kind of have a hand in everything that goes around in SAO, but I was also president of a on-campus group for a year and a half. So I also know that side of things. Um, pretty much just dabbling a little bit in all the sides of student activities. Nice to see you both. <laughs> So do we want um, perhaps Ryan or Alicia to kind of share some of their experiences? Do you want to ask for questions? Which way do you want to go? Does anybody have any questions? We've been talking for a while, so. I got a question. There you go. This is, this is Jaden, um, by the way. So for the sports thing, the intramural or whatever, can you still join that if you actually do play sports for the college? Or is it some like, I mean, I wouldn't think like you couldn't, but you know. Ryan, you got it. Yeah, it really depends on the sport and the season that's in. Because if you're in season then, I mean, your coach would advise against that. But if you're out of that season, you could play in, like, pretty much any campus rec activity you want. But, yeah, just because, like, if you get hurt, then playing in a campus rec activity, yeah, that's that's obviously not very good. So, yeah, that makes sense? Yeah, I know you talked about the different seasons, um, but say like for basketball or tennis or something like do they are they different than the normal like season in college? So they're not like conflicting or does it like switch? Like I know you have the rotational like four seasons or whatever, but. Yeah, I mean, there might be a little bit of overlap with the time frame and some like I know the basketball seasons overlap a little bit, but I mean, you could always join after I know one teammate right now just joined a team after his season ended. So yeah, you could just do that if there's some overlap with that. Jaden, you played tennis, right? Uh, yeah, I played tennis and basketball. Okay. But for so far for college, I um, talked to Steve, but I don't know about basketball. I had him like try to contact the dude, but I don't know if the athletic director responded yet. And I don't know if I want to play, but it was just an option. Or like this though too, like if I didn't play it for the 
the team just to like still you know play because they've played before but so yeah yeah our campus rec i would say our we have usually we have an a league and a b league so the a league is always a little bit more competitive the b league is for people who want to have fun and just kind of hang out and you know not get so you know competitive with each other so i'm assuming since you play basketball you'll probably want to be in that a league but right now due to covid we just did three on three this year so it was just one big league that we did oh we don't have to fall up and down <laughs> Um, it's like our middle school uh, A and B team, but different. Right, right. Other questions from our students? I would also just like to note that Noah did drop a follow on the Ripping College Campus Rec Instagram. So thank you, Noah. Oh, nice. Very good. <laughs> and remind me, Noah and Jaden, and we have, let's see, ones. Danny's still on. Are you guys all signed up for orientation? I'm not uh, yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, you you heard Sarah's pitch on that. Don't forget to do that. Um, again, that'll be your chance to meet with your faculty and get your classes and all that good stuff. So I'm still waiting the options. Um, oh, so. you're you're still not enrolled. Sorry, Jaden. Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's good. Well, what has taken you so long, Jaden? <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm teasing you. <laughs> Could go into that, but. <laughs> I would like to point out another thing um, that I work, I do work for the Wilmore Center as well. So the Wilmore Center and Campus Rec are two different things, but all, both of them, I need a lot of students to work for me. So another part is apply, apply, apply. Um, I'll have applications out in the fall for first years. So mm -hmm. within the first week you guys get on campus, look for an email from me, go on to Handshake. Handshake. Yes, okay, it changed a couple of times. So yes, yes. Um, yeah, so go on to Handshake, apply, especially for Campus Rec, Ryan can pitch, we really need some refs. So you can also ref and play. So we try to work around your schedule, um, your game schedules and everything, and then have you ref a couple of games, go play, come back, ref a couple of games, that kind of thing. On the topic of campus employment, that's a really great segue mm -hmm. to something we didn't cover here, but obviously students need jobs and we take a lot of pride in the college community of how your job can be a way that you get involved, right? The whole mm -hmm. focus of this presentation is ways to get connected and where you work on campus is a really great source of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Maddie's 100% correct. The Wilmore Center is absolutely the largest pool of student employees that we have. I think the next on that list would be working for food service. Our mm -hmm. food service provider is Sage, and they've been mm -hmm. doing a really excellent job of making their student workers feel connected. Mm -hmm. My office will have one or two vacant positions in the fall that mm -hmm. are specifically designed for first years to take them, right? We want to yeah. get folks connected to the office and and that source of, of involvement early. Uh, and so that'll be an opportunity there. Uh, the, the library- For our will, office, admission. Admission will have uh, open- We'll hire, yep. We hire um, telecounselors, so people who are calling prospective students. Um, Ryan used to work in our office. We miss seeing you every day, Ryan. Um, but uh, student workers just to help with application processing. And of course, uh, tour student guides, student ambassadors uh, that act as tour guides and do other things for us as well. So I think Sarah, I mean, great, glad you brought that up because I think work study, there are lots of options. You just have to really apply and look at it. And many students, maybe even Alicia and Ryan do more than one job um, or have had more than one job, but we work with your schedule and it's a great way to either earn money for fun or put that money towards your tuition. Do either of you, Ryan, and Alicia, do you put money towards your tuition? Is that something you've used? Yeah, great. I think that's a good note. Um, and again, as long as you look for something and it might be in food services, but it's still a job. The other piece of Ripon um, is that we are close to our downtown Ripon. And there are plenty of businesses first to go and enjoy those places downtown, coffee shop, ice cream parlor, pizza, barbecue, um, but they also hire students. So that's a really good option as well. And again, you don't need to go far to get that job. Yeah. And I, the last plug I'll make on, on employment stuff, the virtual orientation platform will give you instructions on how to log into Handshake for the first mm -hmm. time. And ideally, 
there will be a list of open positions that you can immediately apply for. Like before you even set foot on campus in August, you can right. submit applications for jobs that'll be open uh, and then get scheduled for those interviews and get connected mm -hmm. to that, that opportunity mm -hmm. right away. Yep. In lieu of questions from students, I'd like to know, maybe Alicia could tell us about um, some of her favorite activities or favorite things you do on campus. Yeah, um, so I'm a pretty involved student. I kind of pride myself on that. Sometimes I get a little bit too involved and I <laughs> give away too much of my time, but it's just because I love the extracurricular activity so much. Um, so from a first year, I joined as an exec board member of our um, Hispanic Heritage Group on campus, La Unida. And so I have been on the exec board for um, all four years of college. Um, I was the president for three semesters. Um, obviously working through COVID was a little bit different, but having that experience and getting to know people, having those connections is probably the best part of what I've done. I even got a tattoo in memoriam of La Unida. Um, wow. I'm also, obviously I said, I'm the student manager of our SAO. Um, so I've been working there for about five semesters now. Um, and so that's been great, you know, getting to know Sarah, um, you know, working up the office to make it such an inviting um, space for students. Um, and then I guess my last big thing I'm involved in is I'm, I'm an RA on campus. Um, so that helps, I'm on a first year floor. So basically what I do is I reach out to first year girls who live on my floor um, and I help them get involved, help them join clubs if they want, um, help them get in, in touch with tutors, whatever they need. I'm kind of there as a bouncing point. I have a little cat named Merlin. And let me tell you, everyone wants to see that little bugger. Everyone's always really happy when I take him outside. So, yeah. <laughs> you take Merlin outside? How did I not know this? I just did it for the first time yesterday. <laughs> like a harness on a walk kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My cat when I lived in Madison. <laughs> he loved it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just an FYI, we have some other students joining us that are gonna talk about the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. So welcome to those folks as well, but we'll just keep on chatting here. And again, any questions you guys have, um, Danny, I know you're still on. If there's things that you'd like us to uh, refer to or share more on, you can chat or certainly unmute yourself and ask. Um, perhaps Ryan, what, what's your favorite thing about Ripon in general? Man. You know, there's a lot of things that like, man, I mean, how do I put this? <laughs> oh, jeez. It's, it's tough to narrow it's down. It's tough for me to narrow down. Oh, it's your boss. Right. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> sure. We'll just leave it at that. No. I have three bosses, though. Keep that in mind. Right. Oh, man. I mean, I really just like being out and about and having to interact with a lot of people every day, just because we're so small, like I see a lot of different people every day. Like, I swear, like just last week, I was walking from my dorm to the library and I was, that's not a very far distance. Like, I think I saw like 10 people that I knew just on that walk. Mm -hmm. Like I, it was so weird. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how I saw that many people. Yeah. So that's just the part I like is that I can see a lot of different people every day and talk to a lot of different people every day. Yeah. So with that, you know, it's interesting because some folks, and again, I, you know, people come from different sizes of schools and cities, but, you know, we are small and people I think can get worried that it's too small because there's not as many people, but tell me, you know, again, and, and either of you can answer this, but the idea that you still get to see so many different people and meet different people, is that, is that fair? Do you ever feel like there's not enough people to do things with, or do you, you know, do you have a lot of interactions, right? Yeah, I can answer that. So I went to a high school where my graduating class was 43 kids. <laughs> so Ripon to me is pretty huge, <laughs> um, which is really awesome because I get to see people and you know meet people from um, different walks of life. Since I was involved in the Diversity Coalition, I got to meet people from you know like international students all the way to um, people who had immigrant parents. Um, you know, if you join political groups, you get to talk with people who have differing views from you, which is awesome. Um, yeah, just getting to know so many different people from diverse backgrounds, especially compared to my high school experience. Um, it's just been really great. Do you think, um, you mentioned like political and I think of people 
um, you know, maybe religious values, political values, just things like that. Do you ever feel like you are not able to share your own personal thoughts, whether in classroom or with friends? Have you ever had any kind of issues where you don't feel comfortable sharing? Um, I do think you kind of grow into that. Um, I think as a freshman, I was coming in um, as a pretty like timid person. I didn't really want to share my um, opinions on things like that. Um, but, you know, taking these classes and I'm a Spanish major. And so I really got to learn about, you know, different culture and learn how, you know, different religions or whatever were affecting, you know, the culture, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and I think that's such a good way to kind of put yourself into uncomfortable circumstances, um, you know, getting involved with the diversity coalition, going to the events where they put you in uncomfortable conversations to watch you sit there and struggle with it. That's mm -hmm. how you learn. And so I think taking those steps and making sure you're educating yourself is like the best way to get out there and do it. So I don't personally feel uncomfortable anymore. I'll say what I want to say. And if someone disagrees with me, have a civil conversation with me and we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Great. Ryan's going to sneak off here. Anybody have any question for Ryan specifically? Maybe we'll see you one year. There you go. <laughs> I will toss a, a shout out to Noah while we've been on this registered for orientation. Get after it. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye Ryan. Ryan. So Hannah and is it Louis or Louis? Uh, it is Louis. Louis, I had yes. it wrong both ways. So <laughs> All good. All good. welcome, All good. welcome. Um, as you know, we're going to jump into some other topics here, really more activities and groups and clubs. But I um, uh, just want to welcome you to the session. And um, we've got a few kids that are hanging on to uh, talk and hear questions. Um, Anything you guys want to add in as we're chatting, feel free. So, sure thing. I, yeah. Or is there anything like in particular that you guys have already talked about, or anything that like questions that you guys have that like I could possibly speak on before we get started with the activities or anything? Mm -hmm. We have Danny and Noah and Jaden on yet, and um, yeah, anything like I said, we'll, we're going to talk uh, with Luis and Hannah and a few others from the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Um, of course, welcome to stay on. We're just going to continue this Zoom link and continue on with that. But um, Maddie and Sarah have talked and Alicia have talked about, you know, student activities and the Wilmore Center and intramurals, um, things like that. So um, I, I, I don't want to jump ahead too far. I want to have you guys be able to share your intro here in just a few minutes. Um, of course. Get, yeah. Of course. Uh, I mean, uh, there's also like Greek life as well. I'm part of Greek life. Uh, yeah. You can't tell. Theta Chi <laughs> fraternity back there. Uh, I'm actually the scholarship chair for Theta Chi fraternity. So just I'm in charge of like our grades and making sure that our houses like uh, our chapters like grades stay up and like they look good. Obviously, we want to have. Uh, be academically excellent. Uh, it's part of our motto. It's part of what we want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and at a college like Ripon, that's kind of what uh, you aspire to do. It's always about academics first. And then you have these activities to make that experience um, better. Mm -hmm. um, and you grow community that way. So that's kind of what I view it as. And I will say that Greek life is a perfect place to make um, build community and get to know a lot of new people and get new experiences just because mm -hmm. it opens up a plethora of like opportunities for that and uh, it also provides a good way to like make networks and connections for the future once you um once you decide to join the workforce as well mm -hmm. so it's one of those things that's uh, definitely definitely an experience that I would want everyone to experience but I understand if it's not like mm -hmm. something that people get into but yeah it's one of the things I get cool great thank you anything last minute for Sarah or Maddie or Alicia before I let them be released <laughs> I'm just gonna add working at SAO is like one of the best jobs on campus I think so I think <laughs> if either you go for Sarah or Maddie let's say like <laughs> Pick who you want to be your boss because they're both fantastic. Even though Maddie did not recognize me when I got a haircut, 
Oh, did Kelly <laughs> tell you? Yeah. What a jerk. I'm never telling her anything. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> with that note, yeah. I Manny. love your haircut. Oh. I love her haircut. I wanted to yeah, tell her that. Cute. Okay. That was the last thing I wanted to put on. <laughs> it's way shorter, right, Alicia? Did you have, I mean, like shoulder length at least? Yeah, I got it chopped all the way off. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Maddie, Alicia, Sarah, thank you for joining us for this portion. Uh, we're going to jump into the next section with our guest and, um, oh, bye, Noah, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, start that next session. But thank you so much, ladies. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good rest of your day, y'all. Thank, thank you. you. And <laughs> hi, Maria. Hello there. So we have um, a couple of your students on. I think Anisha is here and Maite is here. And uh, hey. we, we have a couple of current students. Hi, Maite. We have a couple of current students that are on from the first one. I'm going to bring in other people who, have, who want to join and we'll just kind of get it kicked off here like in a minute or two, okay? Great. Can I do a shared screen, Jill? You may, yes. Let me, um, I will make you a co-host. There you go. Perfect. You should have that. And um, yeah, I'll let me, um, let me know when that happened. When I, yep, I will that. turn over to you in just a minute. Once we kind of get a few more kids situated here, I'm hoping. Um, yeah. So Des is on with us. Nice to see you back, Des. <clears throat> Yeah, I got a couple of students that we'll see if they're able to join. Um, for those of you, again, we will record this and put it on YouTube in just a couple of days. So um, we'll have good content to share and students can look at later if they choose to, but able to make it tonight. So Hannah, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Good. We haven't talked for a while. It's been it, the, the semester and a half have flown by. Yeah. Not so much to you. It seems like it's a, it's just been, it's like almost the year's over. Well, I mean, there's only like eight weeks left. Right, right. Man, anyway. And my Tay, you're good. <laughs> good. Anisha, if you yeah, want to. Yeah, I'm enjoying my sophomore year. Good. Anisha, if you want to have your video on, you may. And um, yeah, we got a couple students here with us. Almost 4.45, so we'll start officially in just a sec. Maria, are you getting packed for your trip to California? A little bit. <laughs> I would say it's quite cold out there today again. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, definitely different from the 60, right. 60 degrees that we had two days ago. So it's um, definitely just gonna, don't. Yeah, I was going to say cold over there is, you know, 58 to 62 degrees. It's cold, it's freezing in California. California oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's 445. I think we should jump in. I've got someone else coming in. Good. Victoria's going to join us, it looks like, from Idaho, if I'm not mistaken. And she got in. There is Victoria. Hello, how are you? And so students who are on the call who are uh, in, enrolling or are accepted, you are more than welcome to share your screen if you wish. We're all friends here and we want this to be very informal and um, welcome to the session. So today um, I have some guests uh, joining me today. I'm Jill Cardinal from the admission office and I'm the campus event coordinator and I'm joined by some folks from campus, some students, and of course, uh, Maria, who is our director from the Center of Diversity and Inclusion. 
And we're going to talk about that program, that office space, what kinds of things are there and the clubs that are there and all the students who are involved. So we've got a good panel of students to, um, to share and we want to take your questions as well. So with that, I'm going to turn over to you, Maria. And if you want to do an introduction and however you want to move forward, if you want to have the students do their introductions now or a little bit later, I am uh, perfectly fine with whatever you want to do. Awesome. So um, I will have the students introduce themselves at the end. Simply okay. because I want to give them most of the time yep. to, to talk and to take up the space. Um, but I, I, I want to thank everybody for being here with us today because um, and congratulate you all for being admitted and for being a future Red Hawk. We're excited to meet you here at Ripon College. Um, and in the spirit of the Center for Diversity and Inclusion and some of the work that we do and all of the programming that we offer, we always begin with a land acknowledgement. Uh, we want to make sure that we recognize our 12 First Nations uh, that reside in the state of the boundaries of the state of Wisconsin. And among those nations are the nations of Ho-Chunk, Potawatomi, Ojibwe, Menominee, Mohican, Oneida, and Brother Town. And the way that we center ourselves for our programming and our space, in especially spaces that we are invited to, is by honoring their history of resistance and resilience. Um, we are thankful for the space that you are giving us today. Um, let's see if I can move this. My name is Maria Mendoza Bautista and I'm the Director of Multicultural Affairs and I am going to tell, give you a quick glimpse about the CDI. Again, I want to give most of the space to the students so I'm going to really breeze um, by some slides, but I wanted to show you some, some of our familiar faces at the CDI. Our student interns, uh, Luis and Hannah and Stephanie all work together with, uh, with me, along with Rachel, who is actually here today as our student volunteer. So there's different opportunities to get involved at the Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Um, our student intern uh, positions are paid positions here on campus. And um, as students, they are able to uh, have their schedules centered around their uh, school schedules. So, uh, we work around that so that we can accommodate everyone's schedule. But I'm, I'm really happy uh, to be able to introduce our team here. Uh, we were celebrating the holidays right before the break. Um, yeah, and so a little bit about the CDI. Uh, we, we were inaugurated in 2015, so we just had our fifth uh, birthday at the CDI. Um, and just a little bit about our statement is that we're committee, committed to facilitating spaces of critical thinking, dialogue, and reflection while engaging in further connections. And we uh, thrive ourselves in building uh, a community of, uh, that allows students to break bread. We display cultural dress, music, tr music traditions. We speak native languages, uh, our native languages for myself, it's Spanish. And so Maite will come into my office and we'll, we'll bust out in some awesome Spanish conversation, which is very familiar to us in our families, along with Luis and Hannah, um, and even Rachel, who's learning some Spanish too. So, um, and then we further examine the differences and similarities by engaging in, in all of these experiences. This is a little, bit of what you will see when you walk into the CDI. We have four core values that we focus on at the CDI, education and advocacy, allyship, collaboration, awareness, and visibility. And here is a way for you to connect with us further on social media and email. Some of the resources, resources that you will see at the CDI uh, that you will have access to uh, will be um, myself. I'm a life coach and I also do uh, some uh, advising outside of the classroom. I want to know what your goals are, how we can better connect you to networks, um, how we can support um, some of your goals and aspirations for career um, planning. And, and then, I, I, you know, I would 
in a nutshell, I would describe what we do as, you know, we're sort of a cultural lab for critical thinking and advocacy. And our student interns play a big part in this through our different programming. Um, when you walk into our space, you'll also see our beautiful mural, our social justice mural, international flags, uh, symbol symbolic and sacred artifacts, computer stations that are open for anybody to use, our library collection, a really cozy lounge area, um, an art therapy co corner that we're, we're continuing to, to work on just to make it a really fun space. Um, and we have a study room in through that door that you see um, as you enter the mural. And then uh, we have a TV, a mini food and snack pantry. We have school supplies and we even have winter supplies because it can get a little chilly in Wisconsin at Ripon. Um, we also uh, are very proud to be uh, a sponsor and an office dedicated to our international students. I think one of the wonderful parts about coming to Ripon is that you will meet students who are here from around the world and who are, um, who are going to be your peers in class as well. We have a lot of, you like that picture, Maite? Uh, we have a lot of signature celebrations and events throughout the entire academic year. Both the fall and the spring are full of different uh, monthly uh, events and traditions. Here are some, just some of our programs. Um, in, in the fall, we celebrate uh, Latinidad, uh, Latinx Heritage Month, and in the spring, uh, we do a, a really nice program as well for Black History Month, in addition to celebrating Cesar Chavez, uh, learning a little bit more about our intersectional uh, pride communities. So, um, you know, there's a little bit of programming here for everybody. Uh, our students are are at the heartbeat of the CDI uh, without them and without their uh, engagement, uh, we would not be able to do the kind of work that we do. And so I think that it's, it's really awesome to be able to work with our students um, to design programs and uh, advocacy that is very important to them. Here you'll you see um, students participating in a solidarity and unity march that we just had a few weeks ago. Uh, as we culminated Black History Month and we learned about um, the late John Lewis. And um, it was a very exciting, exciting moment. Um, there were about 100 people that participated in the campus community in our Solidarity and Unity March. And we learned together and um, it was just a very special moment for us. We're also um, a leading office for our diversity coalition groups. And uh, you probably heard already from Student Activities Office. Um, they are the ones who uh, help all of our student clubs on campus uh, get established and get their paperwork done. And, um, and then other CDI holds a monthly diversity coalition meeting. Uh, where we welcome all of the, these different student groups who participate and uh, bring a lot of awareness and education around issues that are impacting their respective communities. And then joining me today are our students. Um, and I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to introduce you to our students this way because this is just a little bit about their involvement. Um, you know, you'll, you, you'll see them participating in many, many different things. But today I want to leave this, this in special introduction for you to be able to meet our wonderful students who are here to introduce themselves. They're gonna talk a little bit about how they have connected with our space and the CDI throughout their years here and um, tell you a little bit about their academic focus and um, how they are involved in student engagement. Um, and I will stop the share so that you can meet our students. So students, take it away. 
No, I, I can start off. Um, so my name is Luis Aragon Miranda. Uh, I'm a senior here at Ripping College. Um, and as Maria said, I am one of the CDI interns. Um, and I've been working at the CDI for about over a year now. I got hired um, in February of last year. So uh, working through the pandemic has been one of my specialties, but I study sociology and anthropology as well. Um, I'm also one of the co-founders and leaders of the Men of Color Affinity Group here on campus um, that I have with my friend uh, Zeke uh, and my other friends, uh, Shane Reed and uh, Daniel Bonchari. Um, so that's kind of the groups that I've been involved in. As a CDI intern, I'm involved with a lot of the other affinity groups just as a way to support um, and make sure that those groups are uh, being as supported as possible just because this is a collective effort um, and I believe that I believe and most of the people here also believe that uh, a lot of the fight is intersectional so I want uh, to learn as much as I can from these from our students but also just making sure that everyone feels supported here on campus as well so that's uh, kind of my minute elevator talk intro I guess. Okay, I can go next. Hi everybody, my name is Hannah Brockman and I am a first year student here at Ripping College and I got hired as a CDI intern um, since the start of my time here. I've been working ever since I came in August. So I've really enjoyed getting to know um, the team, Luis, Stephanie and Maria and all of the um, Diversity Coalition members and groups because it's really helped me to get connected on campus which was a really hard thing in the pandemic personally for me to like get connected. So finding a job and getting, finding a job for me on campus was one of the ways that I got connected right away. And being a CDI student intern, not only did I have a team that I worked with, but I also had a bunch of clubs that supported their mission and things that I was interested in more, learning more about different and various cultures. So that really helped me. Um, and I'm interested in learning other cultures because I am double majoring in Spanish and French and minoring in secondary education to become a teacher in the future. So that's a little bit about me. I guess I could go next. Thanks, Hannah. Um, my name is Stephanie Boahin. I'm a senior chemistry biology major. Um, I'm also from Ghana and West Africa, so I'm an international student. Um, I'm one of the CDI interns, so the third one. And um, other things I'm involved in on campus is I'm involved in res life. I've been in residence life since my freshman year. Um, currently, I'm the student assistant hall director. So I am um, basically in charge of the other RAs and helping build community on our campus. Um, I'm also involved with the Black Student Union. Um, past up uh, in the past, I was part of the executive board, but now I'm in. Um, I'm just a member now, <laughs> um, or as I like to call it, I'm the secret um, advisor of the FSU, as I like to call it, but I'm not really. Um, but then apart from all that I've said so far, I also like to just support the other groups on campus uh, because when we come together, that's how we make ourselves better. Um, supporting other students, getting to meet other students of color and basically building community in that way because we've got each other. And that's what I love about Ripon is the fact that we all have each other together, coming together to make sure that we all succeed and stay and finish college. So yeah. All right, I can go. Um, I'm Maite. I'm a current sophomore here at Ripon College. I'm a self-design major with a focus of pre-law and hopes to become an immigration attorney one day. Uh, and the reason why I got involved in the CDI was because as a high school senior, I felt like I was gonna be alone and I felt like college was not gonna be for me. And I was so confused and I was so lost. And I reached out to the college and like, you do know we have something called the CDI and we have all these amazing groups. And then I found out that they were genuinely amazing groups and I became involved in all of them as soon as I could. Um, some of the ones that I'm involved in, I actually hold an executive chair in our, uh, Latin group, uh, La Unida, and then I'm also involved, like going to the meetings to for BSU, for QSA, and for ASA as well. So it's literally a giant community of people, like Stephanie said, to help each other get through these next four years. So 
Okay, I'll go next. I think I am the last person. Hi, I'm Ainisha. I am a junior, a biology major with a pre-med focus. I am the president of Black Student Union. Black Student Union. Yes, you. Um, this is my second term as president. And um, a little bit about me. I'm a part of the women's volleyball team. I have two and a half to three jobs on campus. I'm a resident assistant. Stephanie is my boss. Um, and then, yes, she also served as my silent advisor, although she's not so silent sometimes. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I am involved with the CDI uh, primarily through DSU and making sure that Black students especially feel welcomed on campus and feel like they have a space on campus. So that's always been my goal and to make sure that Black students overall stay at Riffin College is the whole core value of Black Student Union on campus. So. We do partner with other um, diversity groups on campus, but that's always been my main focus. Thank you, students. Jill, do we take questions now from? That would be perfectly fine, yes. Or you can continue sharing you know, your highlights and things like that. But of course, if questions from students are there, we. We want we to help definite, out. Yes, we welcome any questions, definitely. <laughs> Q says, this is so cool. Uh, Q is a student and uh, she is enrolled for the fall, so that's exciting. Um, maybe talking about some of, well, I guess the reasons why you chose Ripon, what's your favorite thing about Ripon? I mean, those kind of general things are, are nice to hear too for students. Anybody want to share a favorite, a highlight? I really like how the professors like care about the students a lot. I have yet to meet a professor who's just like, eh. no, all my professors care. Um, all my professors put in their best effort and it creates this kind of environment in the classroom in which you have a connection with your professor, with your peers. And it literally doesn't feel as intimidating as you'd imagine. And, you know, like you imagine college with the 300 students and the one professor who's really strict. When in reality, I walk up to my professor and I'm like, hey, can you explain this? Can you help me? And I, that's one of my favorite parts about Ribbon. Go ahead, Luis. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Uh, bouncing off of like what Maite said, I have a unique attract, college track uh, just because I did transfer from a different school coming into uh, Ribbon in my junior year of college. Mm -hmm. Um, but what attracted me to Ripon was the small, like the small class sizes um, and the small campus size. It, I felt as if I could uh, focus on school most. Um, it also let me build relationships with everyone on the screen here, um, which is something that I can't say that I feel like I would have been able to do at a bigger college just because there's more people to attend to. Um, along with that, it's something that like has helped me focus on my school as much as possible, just because I'm able to have a conversation with uh, my professors um, and I'm able to have that one on one relationship with them and have talks about them or talks with them about several things, whether it's something personal or it's something um, related to class. And I always feel like I get uh, really good feedback from that. I think that's always something that um, has helped me succeed here on campus. Uh, but that's the one thing that I looked for in colleges was the campus class size and uh, like uh, professor to student ratio. Um, I think we boast a 13 to one uh, class size here on campus or something around there, uh, which is uh, pretty incredible considering the fact that like that'll get you um, pretty the attention that you need to like succeed here on campus. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You are correct. It's 14 to 1 faculty to student ratio and uh, class sizes. And you guys can share like what has been a normal class for you? What's the biggest class for you? And maybe a smallest. Um, that'd be interesting. I, I know some some of the um, beginning classes, you know, 110 might be a little larger, but if anybody wants to share about that experience with the classroom size. Yeah, the classroom size is uh, generally get smaller as you progress through your major. So usually your bigger classes are your intro level classes, especially if it's like a science class or a business class, just because if you're, let's say, taking biology, so many majors require biology as um, a prerequisite for other classes that they just tend to be bigger, so that's usually 70 to 80 people. Um, but I think the smallest class I had was like maybe 11 people. I think me and Steph with vertebrate zoology 
with my um, small class. But yeah, it just kind of depends. But we got to put in perspective, you know, other college universities, their intro to bio classes may be 400 students or maybe 1,000 students. So 1,000 to like 70 to 80 is still really small and you still get that one-on-one learning. So, so that's right. We, we don't even have the facility really to have those large classes. So there's not a lot of large auditoriums. Um, Hannah, as a first year, could you talk about sizes of your classes, like your Catalyst class? How many students are in there? Uh, all of my classes have been pretty small. My Catalyst class is my biggest one and it okay. has 20 people in it. Um, but I'm also taking a lot of classes in the language department mm -hmm. and usually those classes range around six to 10 people. So, yeah. Kind of going off what Hannah just said about language department, like um, in my first classes, I've had a class of like three people. Mm -hmm. um, so really, intimate and really small and it's kind of nice because you can get that one-on-one -on -one attention you want from your professors especially in like learning the language so that's probably one of my favorite things too mm -hmm. well we we always say if, if you miss a class professors will know it but for sure if there's only five kids in there you can't you can't hide in there but Jaden, do you have a question you want to ask yeah my, uh, is it math or something my take. yeah my thing Okay, I took Spanish two years once, but um, yeah. So you said you you're taking the pre-law class. Uh, yeah. So I'm self-designed and I'm in a pre-law track. I'm the pre-law president as oh, well. That's good. So um, I was wondering. So is there the catalyst program? Is is there no Gen Ed or is that like the five core classes? So is there more time to like or more freedom to do what you want? Yeah. Do you guys want to speak to that? Because I can certainly answer that too, but maybe like if the law, like the, taking the law or whatever, like that's could be harder depending. So like if there's more time to do it, because you're not like mm -hmm. out of force right. the, the right. I mean, I could answer since I finished taking Catalyst. I'm a senior, so I'm done with my Catalyst requirements. So basically, the idea of Catalyst is that we have um, classes that you take. We have um, one every semester, and you'll be done by your junior year. And so, and the last class that you have to take is the um, the 300 class, which is more of like a presentation, um, a, a more of a group work, and you come together to find a solution to a problem that you are, you're all interested in. And so to your question about it being easier, I think the Catalyst curriculum makes it so much better because you get to focus on like the core requirements for your major, for whatever track you're in. Um, mm -hmm. And then also it makes it really good to like not have to, take too many um gen eds right we don't we don't do gen eds so the um, catalyst uh, makes it better because you can just focus on that and then you don't have to take any gen eds um and they're all so different and so diverse um i remember my freshman year i took a class on the bible um mm -hmm. i know some people took a class on black feminism and beyonce which i wanted to be in and mm -hmm. so there's so much different topics so like different things that you can um get involved in with the catalyst curriculum so yeah basically kind of like the small Mm -hmm. um, just about it yeah so can you and ask for pre-law we oh, have sorry. the the professor that teaches pre-law is a attorney a practicing attorney so it's pretty cool because you could prick his brain um you could literally ask him any question and he helps us facilitate like lsat prep and everything and it just becomes like this whole bond community in a non-covid semester we would go tour law schools and go to law school fairs and have of mock trial and all these fun stuff. Currently, we still are doing mock trial, but we're some more LSAT prep due to safety. Although for me, like, um, I might have to wait the first year, and then depending how that works. So, but because um, like you need the three five or coming in, you need three point six five, I think, or three point five if you're a uh, sophomore, junior, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, for that, so I was just wondering, like, then also. So can you start like kind of what you want to do if you know what it is right away because you don't have mm -hmm. to take the basic classes because you have the catalyst, which kind of mm -hmm. things up. Yes, Han Hannah, would you speak as a first year? Tell, tell Jaden maybe what your first classes were your first semester, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, I can. Uh, so I started off and I actually tested with the language department, you test into which level that you fit in. And so I tested in the Spanish 280. So the first semester, I already checked my first box off for my Spanish major. Um, so I came in and I was able to start working right away towards my major. 
I also took a class that was a requirement of my educational studies minor and a class that counts towards my French major as well. So after my first semester, I had already done three classes towards my majors and minors, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty impressive because I only had to spend mm -hmm. four credits worth on the general education um, catalyst classes. So I'm already I'm already working on all of my majors and minors, and I don't really have to worry about finishing them because I know I have so much time to do it since I've already gotten such a head start on it. Oh, and you're still a freshman? Yeah, I'm still a freshman. But you're almost, well, not like almost done, but like, yeah, you're almost, <laughs> or no, after she's, one year. She's, yeah, she's taking classes already in her particular area of interest, yeah. and, so and that's what everybody does. But it's not like you're like, I was like, you're almost done only one year. But, but I suppose if you're already on the path, it's good. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know what you want to do. Sorry. If you don't know what you want to do, you can take classes that interest you. So you might start off, you mentioned exercise science, I believe, Jaden, earlier. So you could take a class in there. You can take a political science class something else and then your catalyst the first semester you can feel it out and see and then if you decide yeah i'm going to study law or i'm going to study exercise science the second semester you take some more classes so it really is about that freedom and the room to do more than one thing but to do what you want and explore and we're liberal arts we want you to explore different areas we don't want you to just focus on one thing but yeah. you're able to do you know multiple things as well there's also the question of, say, if I were to take the, the law class, like it's probably built in, right? But is there classes that would help you with that? Or do you not necessarily have to ha like have a certain understanding of something else to help you with that? Like say history or something, or is it kind of like you don't have to? So for the law class, it's uh, more of an introduction, like a course, you know, teach you how to read like legal jargon and how to, you know, your Miranda right. It's kind of like the basic thing to learn you know during your first year of law school but for me personally as a pre-law student I've taken almost all my classes have been politics and history classes you know that's what I'm interested in that's what I want to go to I want to go into immigration litigation so that's what I've taken but I've also taken some fun classes um I took religion classes uh just for fun because I just wanted to and I felt interested to it but it the law class is like basic introduction and then if you go forward you could get research with uh, the professor. You could meet one-on-one. -on -one. I believe last year he was looking for interns at his office. So it's pretty much as active as you want to be in the law field. If you want to go head on like I have, that's totally cool. I'm still alive. If you want to be passive, cool, because you're still going to get to law school if that's your goal. I, don't know, I already got a letter from that like track star 91 or whatever who's like an attorney in Colorado <laughs> I'm like what <laughs> it's like, how did... and then it's like same thing like I'm undecided but kind of might want to do things it's like I didn't know what I wanted to do too like so I did more things and then like my dad said I think she was really involved in the school too so, so it seems like there's more freedom to do what they necessarily, necessarily know what you want to do so that's mm -hmm. you know. And if you don't go into the law class this semester, there's always a, the pre-law society that will always, like give you input and give you like a, you know, step in the puddle. And if you don't like it, you know, there you go. You cleared it up. Um, but if you like it, you know, it's a step forward. Sort of thing you don't need to like, or is it kind of have to like, there's the one class, you the, the pre-law class you can take, but like, if you do go that route, are you going to want to structure your other classes like towards history and government? or like, not like forensics or something, so you can like, or like analyze or statistics or something, so to like help you, or is it, it's built in the class kind of thing? So for law school, you don't have to have a specific major like med school does. For law school, you could go into law school with a communication degree or poli sci or history mm -hmm. or English. So it literally doesn't matter. Um, okay. I like politics, so that's why I'm here. Um, okay. If not, like it's more up to you. Politics. Mm -hmm. I was saying like because I know there's a three on three component right you be law and then you go to law school which is probably like for that right but I don't know if like you have to do like history and stuff so you have no. information or if you could do basically like nothing besides that class related to that and you still could be a lawyer basically you technically could but I completely 120 percent recommend that you join the pre-law scholars to prepare you for the LSAT yeah mm -hmm. or no I was saying like um like you don't have to like take history and government and understand mm -hmm. all that. Is that kind of like 
mm-hmm. should be in the pre-law or like law school path kind of thing. It's going to probably depend. I'm on sorry the- to interrupt, but it yeah. sounds like this may be a good conversation for you to have with my thing. Yeah. Uh, that's how you can connect yeah. a little yes. bit better. Um, I, uh, because ahead. we do have other students on this call that may have other questions. Mm-hmm. I see other names here, and I, yeah. I to be fair to the other students as well. Maite, I, I, I'd love for you to connect with. Yes, uh, I can. What is I your can, name? It says iPhone. I got it, Maria. I can I can get her uh, Jaden's number and stuff. Jaden, yes, I guess Jaden. Like I'm already on the path uh, to being a lawyer. This question. Yeah. Thank you, Jaden. We, we really yeah. appreciate your questions. Those are wonderful. I think Maite would be a great, great yeah. mentor for you. I, I know Q, you had a question. There she is. Thank yeah, you. Hey, I know you had a Hi, question. everybody. Hi. How are you guys doing? We're good. good. What's going on, Q? Great. Um, nothing much. Um, I really like the, you know, the the interaction. I'm really big for interaction and community. So um I love the conversation that they were having. I was kind of intrigued, even though I don't know anything about law and that's not my interest i was wondering if anybody was um because i didn't hear in the beginning but if anybody was pre-med or was going for anything in the sports medicine category because that's kind of my area and i just want to know a little bit more about that anisha or stephanie yeah i was gonna say anisha and i we got you um anisha and i with pre-med um i'm a senior she's a junior is nish still here because i know she has practice oh okay she's still here um, but yeah, so um, yeah, we, we have a, a big, I, I would like to say a big pre-med community. Um, and when I say pre-med, not just like medical, we have uh, pre-PA, we have uh, people who are interested in going to nursing, we have um, physical therapy, we have a variety. Mm-hmm. And then we also have the Society for Pre-Health Professions, which is basically um, a group of, uh, where a group of, I guess, pre-meds that uh, we come together, we have meetings, um, talk about, we have a journal clubs so where we talk about research, stuff like that. There's research opportunities if you're interested in that for maybe specifically medical school, but other forms of um, um health professions um yeah so there's yeah this is a there's a really big community here a good community Mm -hmm. here we're all pretty much uh we work together to kind of build each other up and then you know get ourselves into the medical field Mm -hmm. and also we also have um a pre-health advisory um group where the professors we have professors who are in this um group from all the different departments in the um science department and basically help propel you um into whatever career in the health field you want to go into um helping you write recommendation letters helping you figure out like mcat or uh, pcat or things like that um also another cool thing i I know i'm giving you (laughs) A lot of information, but I got it's excited. okay. I'm loving it. I'm actually taking it all in. I'm really I excited. excited. I got so excited, but also Rippin just recently had um like a, a pipeline um pipeline uh, pr- um contract I think with um the Medical College of Wisconsin for pharmacy. So if mm-hmm. there's something you're interested mm-hmm. in, that is also something you can look into and ask your um admissions counselor about. That can really help you, um, even for engineering, for instance, like they have like a pipeline program. Mm-hmm. So things we have mm-hmm. things like that that help mm-hmm. students kind of like usher them into the next step, usher them into the next phase. So I am really yeah. excited about my decision right now. I'm like yeah. really <laughs> I'm excited. Happy you are. I'm like really, really ready to come to campus like right yeah. now. But I know right it's not. So. I think Maria might have another person to work in that office, right? <laughs> You make it to the CBI. Yeah. We'll wait for you. You've been quiet. Anything on your mind? I think that I actually do want to join this group. I'm big on um, diversity. I love meeting new people and I'm a social butterfly. I love meeting new people. I love getting to know different things about different cultures. I just love learning about, you know, other people and other people's lives. I like hearing other people's story and where they come from. So I most definitely will be you know keeping an eye out for it and mm-hmm. most likely I'll, I'll be in this group you bet victoria any questions oh, i don't put you in the spot but do you have anything you want to ask um not really as of now i am okay. like queer so i was wondering more about like the queer queer straight sure. lines more about sure. that yeah agreed very much yeah agreed. absolutely That's a great question we- we have a very strong queer straight alliance. Uh, Ren is the president. Um, 
of, of the organization. Uh, they are doing some incredible work on campus. Uh, one of our goals for the fall uh, collaboratively with the CDI is to do allyship training. And so we're working to do a proposal where we can bring uh, an expert in the field to train um, as many allies on campus on LGBTQIA plus issues. Um, in April, we have Gaper and um, our office is putting a really nice um, celebration board at the CDI along with um, a couple of connections with QSA. So um, their, their intersectionality, intersectional identities are very important um, here at Ripon College. And we celebrate and we honor, we honor all, all of the identities, um, but it, it really takes the leadership of students. If a student walks in and says, you know, this piece is of my identity, of my intersectional identity is very important to me. Um, we then take that feedback as a team and, and we, that is how we develop programs. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we come up with some really fun uh, events where we can learn together because mm -hmm. we have fun and learn together at the same time and, and celebrate. So, um, but the Queer Straight Alliance uh, meets uh, weekly and they have, uh, they have a really strong uh, organization here on campus. We love to hear the, the support. We, yeah. we, we love it. I'm really, I'm really happy about my decision. <laughs> I was regretting it in the first place, but it's like, I have somewhere that I, I have like a second home and I really appreciate you guys for that. Cool. Thank you for sharing. And hey, real quick, um, cause I know you talked about sports medicine. So I just wanted to do like a sports medicine plug. Cause you said you're interested in sports medicine, right Q? Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have like, um, exercise science is actually one of our biggest um, second biggest majors here and so the great thing it's about major. <laughs> yes and so the great thing about sports medicine is that you can go in any direction like we have athletic training and you can actually work with the athletic trainers um, at Wilmore that's our athletic center and I believe you can you can either get paid or be an unpaid intern and you can be in charge of like wrapping ankles for like different sporting events and stuff like that and then we have like different um, graduation or not graduation it's called graduate fairs where like we'll have like pre-physical therapy graduate programs come to Ripon College so you can kind of like see what that's like um we also partner with I believe Ripon Medical and like they'll have the chiropractor come so if you want to shadow under them and stuff like that um there's like so many different opportunities just to network with people um mm -hmm. it's definitely dealing with sports medicine so just have to put yeah. that little plug in there for you girl yeah. thank you I appreciate it so much I have a question offhand. So if we're talking about not like necessarily religion, but is there any, uh, is there any like Christian ones then? Or do we or just like name it if there's groups out there? Yep. It's like, do you know if you have one of those? Yep. We have a Christian uh, campus fellowship. Anybody part of that? Great. Maybe you can talk more about it. Louise? Oh. Wait, I was pointing to my taste. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> my bad. Oh, my, my taste is a part of it. Right. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, so we have Campus Christian Fellowship. It's actually a great program. I'm not as heavily involved, but I do try to go every Wednesday. That's when they meet. And they have, they tell you what part of the Bible we're going to go through. We're going to uh, talk. It's a literal place for conversation about, you know, religion, about everything. And you don't have to be Christian. I'm personally not Christian. I'm Catholic, but I still go. And it's just this place where we could honor God and, you know, be a part of a community. Uh, they have a lot of events. They have a lot of volunteer opportunities. Uh, they have a lot of like game nights. It's a lot of fun and it's a lot of, you know, like a place to connect and a place to honor God. So it's really That's, cool. It's mentioning you the question. You to be Christian. Like, yeah. Okay. Cause it seems like there's different, I mean, depending on religion, you might think different things, but it didn't seem like it got heat, you know, I guess you can still hear, it seems like you can have your beliefs, you know, and there's still oh, like yeah. things for you. And it doesn't have to like change necessarily like, right. um, like what you believe. Same with like politics, I guess. Sometimes it gets mm -hmm. heated if you're like, oh, if you say what, <laughs> I mean, that shouldn't be the case, but it right. changes. It. But yeah, no, I, I think campus is very, uh, you know, free thinking in that we accept again everybody and every belief, and you're you're okay to share your opinions and thoughts and be heard. Um, the Christian group too, I believe that um, they typically will go kind of have a church crawl where I believe they set up 
uh, you know, maybe a weekly basis where they visit different churches in town locally. So you could go with a group if you wanted and just kind of explore different church families. Not that you have to do that either, but there are several different churches within walking distance of campus, which is good to know. But again, if you're like, I don't want to go to that church for myself, maybe you go with a group and kind of check things out. So there are definitely options for you to do really all sorts of things on campus. Okay, so that and sounds good. Oshkosh is like crew or something. So like, I was like, yeah. Okay. Perkin has that not if I go there where I'm going, but so yeah, yeah, there is there's a lot of different uh, denominations with churches around. Um, I'm just gonna ask maybe for one or two more questions. So before we end the session, um, I want to respect the time of our panelists and things too, that we're getting to be almost 5 30. Um, and he's just like, I gotta go. And if you do need to leave, feel free. Don't don't worry about that. But I just wanted to give one more minute or so for any last minute things or anybody want to make a last minute comment um, to the students that are listening. I want to say thank you to our students who participated. Today. Yes. Your dedication Very much. Yes. and your time is super appreciated. We know mm -hmm. you're just going through midterms and getting ready for finals. So right. Thank you for your time. Yeah, it's good to see you all. And uh, I appreciate it too, to share your time. And um, it's good to hear different things that you have to share and different experiences. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great place to be. So if you haven't decided yet, or you're still thinking, you know, um, this could be a, a great place to call home for four years. So I just want to say that, you know, when you do decide to come to Ripon, and when you do get here, you know, like, find us or we'll find you more or less but you know um making sure that you still build that community and make those connections because you know i think that it's when we come together that's how we we end up succeeding you know coming together yeah. finding people who have similar experiences and even who have different experiences so that we can learn from each other and i think that that that's something i love of ripping and that's something i want to share that when you get here you should also you know push forward um meet right. people and then just get out of your comfort zone so yeah yep. hopefully Perfect. i get to see you perfect all right, well, I think with that, I'm going to end the session. Um, again, thank you to everyone for joining and thanks to our current students and Maria, to you for helping put this together. And I hope that we see everybody in the fall um, and uh, you have a great, uh, a great day and keep warm if it's cold as it is here by us. So, all right, take care everybody. Bye guys, take care. Bye.